Hey guys, DMike here for a new episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. In case you couldn't have already guessed it, playing some Mega Man X. This is the first in the Mega Man X series, which you also probably might be surprised by. They decided to name the future X's with numbers after the first one, so this is not Mega Man 10. This is Mega Man X just. So we're gonna go ahead and get started with an intro level. Every one of the Mega Man X games has one of these kind of introductory tutorial levels that gets you adjusted to the mechanics and kind of sets the scene for you here. It appears as though we're in some sort of post-apocalyptic robo world where we've got all of these robots that have broken bad and are since going after us. We'll learn that in this series, the all the robots were initially created for good by Dr. Light and his comrades, but they were manipulated by various people, viruses, things, and uh, they turned into evil creatures. So we've got a group of robots who have gone rogue called Mavericks. They're at the root of all this. So we've got, uh, we've got our hands full right now. We're kind of put into the world to be a bit of a savior. So this introductory phase is not too bad. We've got these gigantic bee robots or wasps, which I am very afraid of bees. Anything that flies and buzzes is not my friend. I understand they're contributions to the world, but I do not want them in or around my personal space bubble. So no thank you. So a little bit of the mechanics. You can head left and right, surprisingly. You can, at this phase, this is all that we can do. We don't have any of the upgrades yet, which there will be plenty of. Everybody loves upgrades. Mega Man has a charge shot for his buster, which is you can hold down to maximize the charge for now. There are only only three stages right now, which he'll turn blue and then kind of this orangish color. So we have three different levels of power. We can shoot little lemons with just the single shot. You can press that as fast as your fingers can possibly move. There's a medium green shot and then there's a big blue shot. So this game actually was sponsored by Big Aggro. So those are lemons. The blue shots are uh, Mountain Dew and then the big ones are blueberries. But surprisingly, they did not get the message that uh, Mountain Dew has been declassified as a fruit. So things were different back in the 90s. They played by a different set of rules. I mean, shoot, pizza is a vegetable. So hey, whatever. So we've got these guys in cars coming at us. Take them out. Not too bad. There's different various levels of health recharges that you saw me pick up along the way. The X ones that are shaped like Power Ranger badges. Those are the ones they fill you up the most. So we've got our first boss of the game. He's in a power armor. It's actually the purple Power Ranger, which was a hidden one from the show that they never showed back in the 90s. So this guy in his power armor, we are gonna have a little bit of trouble with. He's actually impervious to our attacks. He's gonna shoot some cantaloupe at us. Maybe those are honeydew, I don't know. Pick your poison. But uh, yeah, pretty, ru pretty rude, pretty 90s rude. Worthless piece of scrap metal? Uh, how dare you? But don't worry. We've got a buddy. The Red Power Ranger comes to save us. We'll find out who this guy is later. He's a bit out of our league. Also, I believe that they drew Mega Man with tears. I don't know if he can cry, but I think that's a really nice touch. Unless it's just glare, because it also kind of looks like this guy, who we'll learn later who this is also has that, like those white pixels under his eyes. I'm not entirely sure. It looks like tears. And if it's tears, that's hilarious. But they, you know, gave robots sentient life and the ability to choose and have free will and a moral compass, etc. And then, uh, yeah. So also this guy in red, a little cocky, says we may even become as powerful as he is. He's not afraid to flaunt it if he's got it. For sure. And we're told about somebody named Sigma. This game has a weird combination of Greek and also Roman numerals. I'm not entirely sure what the point of that was, but we're supposed to meet up with this illustrious fellow at Sigma's fortress eventually. 
this is your save screen. So if you want to pause this and tap this into your Mega Man X Super Nintendo cartridge to play along with me, feel free. So we've got eight of these Maverick bosses here. You can pick whatever one you want, any order that you want. It doesn't really matter. There is a preferred way in terms of ease of play. We're going to start with this guy. This is Chill Penguin. Or I think it's like something Penguino in Spanish, which I think is a much better name. Or in Japanese. I don't know. In Rockman X. So I always start with this with this stage if I'm doing a casual run through that is headache lit. I don't want to say headache less. I mean there there's still plenty of things that I'm gonna do wrong, but I guess it's the easiest for me to play through. I I just get the most mileage out of this being my starting mission. I mean, it's a nice kind of breather after the incredibly dangerous and super tough tutorial mission. My goodness, how could you ever get through that one unscathed? But this one's pretty good. Uh, it's got keys. This was actually a crossover with Zelda. It's pretty cool. They decided to put them into the game. We yeah, Chill Penguin, a good, casual, relaxing, chill first phase to do. The reality of why this phase is actually, or sorry, stage keeps saying phase, why this stage is preferable is because of what you get from it. Not just the pride and success and good feeling of beating something, but there is an important element that we're about to see here in a moment that is kind of the cursory item for all the eventual Mega Man games that is kind of required. I mean, you could beat the entire game without this, I'm sure. But it is definitely a pain in the butt to not have it. This uh, is our boy, Dr. Light. Santa Claus sponsored this game. Shout out to uh, North Pole LLC. So he recognizes that we're being put into the world because there's so much danger. And we need to kind of be that equalizing force. So he decided to hide this capsule in plain sight. Sometimes that's the way you got to go, especially if you're a politician. So the uh, the game has multiple capsules that you're supposed to find that will give Mega Man various power ups that gives him the ability to have different functions and features to make the game a little bit easier and more fun to play. It kind of opens it up and expands it for you. There are four accessible ones that we'll be able to get out of the eight stages, there is a secret one that we'll worry about eventually. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get the leg upgrade. Turns Mega Man's lower part of his body kind of a bluish, light blue color with uh, the kind of gold wrappings around the ankles, which I think is cool. It almost kind of looks like he's, uh, like he doesn't have pants on anymore. And you know, sometimes you'll wind up in life feeling a little overheated and you gotta take your pants off. Everybody knows that there was that person growing up in school that would walk around wherever you're from and it's the dead of winter with shorts and sandals on. Couldn't pull that off myself, don't have enough body fat for that, but hey. The game decides to be a little more equitable and give us our own right armor. This is temporary. The future Mega Man's actually put a lot of work into making right armor accessible and cool and kind of fun. I don't exactly know which ones have the ones I enjoy, but I just know that this game in particular doesn't really do a whole lot with it. There's a couple of stages where we get to use these and that's about it. But it's cool. I mean, ride armor is fun. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. So without the leg dash, you can't make that jump. And there's a little enclosure here that is kind of looks suspicious. We'll come back to that. That's kind of the par for the course for this game is that there's going to be certain things here that initially when we play through... The first run through, you're not going to be able to really get everything, and that's, I guess, probably to pad the game out a little bit and give it a little bit of replayability. So you can play through all eight stages, but you won't actually be able to technically finish the game 100% unless you go back and double dip. So we're going to continue through. Anytime you see these double bolted doors, that means that you're headed for a boss. I like to go ahead and charge up the full if I can, just for fun. I like that Mega Man is able to kind of walk on air for a moment. This is Cho Penguin. He's our first boss. He has a cool little like hydro backpack where he keeps all of his, I'm assuming, ability to 
to freeze whatever. That would make sense, right? I'm using language in a very good way here. So he'll fly across the screen, go back and forth. He has the ability to jump up on that little hook and that winterizes the room. He can form little penguin statues of himself, which I think is kind of cute. So when he jumps up on the on the hook, you just have to be careful because the goal is that he's going to try to suck you into where he is. So when he goes up there, though, you can meet him halfway and blast him with your X-Buster. Very nice. And you can even shoot him temporarily. You can get a couple of good shots in when he's making the replicas. But the danger of these bosses is that their attacks aren't necessarily super dangerous, but the thing that is super dangerous is running into them. They do a ton of HP damage if you hit them, so try to avoid that at all costs. That's what that kind of gale force wind move that he does with the hook. That's what the intention is as they demonstrated about what not to do. Don't get hit by him. Let's start back and forth across the room. Not too bad. This is a pretty easy boss to start with. I think it's, it's a pretty good one. He does jump around the room a lot, though, which can make it a little tough. So just be mindful of your space and where he's going to be. You know, be mindful of your space. Be mindful of my space and your Facebook. Don't share anything you shouldn't. Social media literacy, everybody. So when he jumps up there, bust him with your, uh, with your shot. You can charge up if you want. You can do the lemons. I actually remember, I could be wrong, so correct me if I am, but there actually is a little bit of good strategy behind using a single shot and like moving towards it at the same time. I, rem I remember reading something about how the inertia plus that shot actually does a pretty good amount of damage as much if not the same as something more charged up. So firing the, the single lemons at him. He's actually allergic to ci citrus fruit, as most of these bosses are for some reason crazy. They need to get uh, more vitamins in their diet. But yeah, hey, that was Chill Penguin. Not too bad. Not too bad. Pretty good first boss. We get our first of the boss items in Mega Man series games. When you beat a boss, you collect their essence from their corpse. We turn a little bit of a yellow and blue color. That's the shotgun ice, which I'm going to try to use the boss items in this game, but it's kind of tough. So anyway, that was Chill Penguin. That was pretty fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourselves. I had a good time. I've been D-Mike, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me on Super Nintendo Sundays, and I'll see you next time. Bye.